Hi, I'm Blair Gilbert from MrHardware.com and Gilbert's Pro Hardware in St. Clair Shores to do a quick dissertation on a multimeter. We went out and we bought a little multimeter, or we got it as a gift. Well, what it's handy for is we can check batteries, we can check electricity in the wall, and we can check if there's continuity, like if there's a bad switch, but you can even check a car battery, all kinds of stuff. DC volts, which is for batteries, um, not household stuff. Most household stuff is alternating current, will be the opposite side. We're on the 10 scale. When we're on the 10 scale, all the way across this meter, you see the 10, and so forth. When we put this on here, we're going to read that bottom scale, the 10 scale. We're reading 6 volts. 6 out of 9. No wonder our uh, microphone went dead while we were doing the shoot. Here's a new one still wrapped up. I can poke through the wrapper. And look, it goes all the way across. One thing I've learned, though, uh, being in the hardware business so long, is that a lot of times batteries that are in garage door openers and car uh, alarms and stuff, that when we check a battery, a lot of times it'll still read 9 volts. It just won't have any push left in the 9 volts. So it looks like it's good on the meter, but you put it in, you have to take your garage door opener and stand right up to the door. So a lot of appliances that I use that only use momentary bursts of electricity is I go by age. If it's over 2 years old and my garage door opener is malfunctioning, I just go ahead and change the battery. Now the next function this does that we use a lot of is resistance. This particular meter has got a couple of choices, 10 times or 100 or 1,000 times the resistance. So what we do is it's got a battery in it. So when I touch the wires together, it shows that we have what's called continuity. The electricity can continue. And it's got an adjustment. This little dial here allows me to adjust. See, I'm adjusting this back and forth. So I adjust it to zero resistance. That's the top scale. So the resistance here is nothing right now because we're metal to metal. We can use this to check a switch when it's out of a circuit by holding it on the switch and turning it on and off. And the switch when it's closed is a completed circuit. No resistance. The switch is off, it's 100% resistance, no electricity. So you can use this to check a switch. And then lastly, we can come over here, we're going to go to alternating current, and we're going to go to 250 volt scale. We know that our house is 110 volts. You can read that scale. When I set the scale, for 10 volts for a battery, you want to set the scale for as close to and exceeding whatever you're going to test. So now I go from 50 volts to 250. Well, I don't want to go to a 110 volt circuit on a 50 volt scale, it will just peg the, the needle. So I go to 250 and I go to the 250 scale on the meter, which is goes 10, 50, 250. So if I read that 250 scale, I'm right at, looks like about 120 volts. That means that my refrigerator, during a brownout, I use this function of this meter for when there's a power outage. So I make sure that when I plug in my refrigerator or my other major appliances, I can check to make sure that I have 120 volts-ish going to my appliances. If it goes below 100 volts or even below 90 volts, as a rule, I then unplug my refrigerator and I wait for the power to come back online to over 100 volts so I don't use low voltage and burn up my generator or any other uh, toys that I have around the house. So those are the three basic scales that I use. DC for batteries, the resistance or ohms for checking for continuity, and then the high voltage for checking the high voltage around my house.